Hi guys, my name is Anuj Chindal and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the recently released handout by SEBI regarding its examination which is due to be held on 17th of January 2021. Okay. Now a lot of students have a lot of queries yesterday also came out with a video and in that video there were some confusions regarding the marks allotted to each question and uh, I saw that there is a sample question paper which has also been provided by SEBI and I think it's pertinent, it's very important that we discuss that sample paper so that we are aware about the level of difficulty of the examination and what is expected from us in the examination hall. Okay, so without wasting any time, without taking, uh, you know, any of your time, let's go to that information handout and discuss everything one by one so that all our queries related to whether number of questions that can be asked, what can be the cutoff and what will be the method of cutoff to be used by SEBI. And lastly, uh, the sample paper which has been released by SEBI, we will be discussing that as well. Information handout which was given by SEBI. Number one thing that you have to remember and understand is that, is that this information handout is only for phase one. Therefore, for phase two, we don't know how many questions are going to be asked and various other queries you might have that will be answered subsequ subsequently only when SEBI releases any or if they actually release any information handout before phase two. Okay. The first highlighted term here is registered for more than two streams. So there's a lot of confusion among students. Let's go through this so, so that we're clear about, uh, you know, what happens to students who have registered for more than uh, for two streams, more than two streams, one stream, etc, etc. Okay, so if you have registered for more than two streams, you will be applicable, your candidature will be considered only for the latest two. That means the maximum number of streams that you can apply for is two, okay, and not three. Number two, paper one and paper two of streams other than general streams will be held in the morning session, whereas paper one and paper two of general stream is going to be held in the afternoon session. So if you are applied for general stream, it will be in the afternoon, uh, any other stream, morning, and therefore paper one of these two different streams are going to be completely different. And this gives an upper hand to people who have applied for other streams as well. How? Because they will have a better idea as to what is the difficulty level of paper one, what kind of questions are asked, and therefore they might be better prepared for the afternoon session for the general stream. This brings us to the conclusion that the cutoff for general stream might actually go a little up because the morning session is meant for other streams. Okay. I hope that logic is clear to you. If you have applied for two streams other than general, then paper one of both the streams is going to be the same and paper two of both the streams is going to be in the same session. Okay. I hope that's clear. Let's go through the marks allotted for each section of paper one and paper two. In general awareness, English, quant and reasoning, there are going to be 20 questions. Uh, very, very similar and very close to what I had predicted. We had thought that general awareness will be of 40 marks with 40 questions and other sections will be of 20 marks and 20 questions. But they've just made it clear that all the sections are going to be of uh, 25 marks with 20 questions. That means every question, right question, you will get 1.25 marks. And for every incorrect question, you will reduce or you will lose 0.3125 marks. Okay. We're going to be very technical and very complex, not technical, I can say complex when it comes to calculation finally. Okay. The cutoff mentioned here is 30% and the duration is 60 minutes. We'll be talking about the cutoff in the further video as well. So stay around because the cutoff is where the maximum confusion and the major confusion lies. And it's very important that we are clear about the confusion regarding the cutoff. When we talk about the general stream for paper two in phase one, then there will be 50 questions that confusion has been cleared of 100 marks. That means two questions per mark and the cutoff is 40% with a time span of 40 minutes. Okay. There will be five options given to you and not four options. One will be correct. There will be penalty for wrong answers, which, which is one four of the marks with that I've already told you. That means 0.3125 uh, in phase one paper one and 0.5 in phase one paper two for every incorrect answer. Okay. The scores of online examination will be obtained by adopting the following procedure. 
Number 2 the corrected scores so obtained are made equivalent to take care of minor difference in difficulty level held in different sessions so if there are different sessions then there will be normalization i'm very sure you understand how equi percentile method work in normalization if not uh, in the next 3 4 days i will be making a small video on the equi percentile method as well although it does not concern you and it should not worry you because you cannot control it actually over information is also bad at times you just have to trust that they are using a statistical method which is proven which has been given a go ahead by the supreme court of india not only the high court but the supreme court of india and therefore there is no question there is no logic in questioning it in you know trying to judge it or trying to understand it in any way possible okay scores obtained by candidates on any paper are equated to the base form by considering the distribution of scores of all the forms cutoffs may be applied in two stages this is important on scores in individual papers and on total score so this means that individual papers that means paper 1 paper 2 might have different cutoffs and it is already been clarified here cutoff is 30% and 40% and it also says on total score cutoff will be applied or may be applied which has also been clarified that there will be a total cutoff of 40% combining paper 1 and paper 2 of phase 1 okay now it has still again not been clarified whether the cutoff will be 30% and 40% only or whether this is the minimum cutoff that you have to achieve subject to any ranking that they might follow it has not been clarified here but i would not place my bets on uh, thinking that if i obtain 30% in paper 1 phase 1 phase 1 paper 1 and 40% in phase 1 paper 2 i will clear i would say that and i would recommend that you try and score as much as possible because if they end up applying uh, uh, you know the ranking method or rankings wherein your name will be based upon whether it you are included or not will be based upon a merit list that they might create then you might be thrown out of the race and therefore it is important that you try to score as high as possible and do not think that if i've scored 30% in phase 1 paper 1 uh, 40% in phase 1 paper 2 and combine 40% then i'm through so i should not be attempting any more questions okay don't be too frugal in your approach towards answering questions try to score as high as possible okay now let's jump to the sample questions it has been clarified by sebi that the difficulty level will be higher not might will be higher in the final examination and therefore keep that in mind a trend or something uh, i i see something very unexpected here in the sections and that is what i'm going to focus upon rather than focusing on the questions and their answers okay the answers have been highlighted here and i'll discuss this those as well the first question in general awareness says tarapur uh, atomic power plant now this is from gk static this is not from current affairs this is purely from static gk and therefore students who thought that covering only banking and financial awareness will do might lose some marks okay so static gk is also important we still have time you should be covering it total number of commercial banks nationalized so far now this is a confusing question because it says nationalized so far however uh, the number of banks which were nationalized in 1969 and 1980 is not the same as the number of banks that we have nationalized right now at present okay so there's a confusion there so 20 commercial banks were nationalized 14 and 6 in 1969 and 80 you all must be aware about that but out of that one bank was merged with pnb new bank of india and then presently i think we have only 11 or 12 banks because of consolidation happening at a very fast pace recently and therefore i would think if i were to answer this question i would an answer is that it has 20 there because uh, so far we have nationalized 20 banks so it doesn't matter how many still remain or not that is not what the question is but people are saying that the answer should be 5 as well there's a confusion there okay third question now this one is a static gk question from banking you can put it in banking and uh, general awareness as well the third one is again from static gk and more of 
you know you know your general awareness then your ability to read general knowledge okay oscar awards are given for best performance in which of the following field everybody knows about it fourth question which of the following financial institutions has introduced kyc guidelines for banks now logical question if you are preparing for sebi rbi or any of the banking exams i think even if you have not read it you should be able to answer it but again this is not from current affairs no kyc guidelines were issued uh, you know far back and therefore it is not at all from current affairs so these are the kinds of questions that might be and will be asked in the examination so be aware don't be shocked don't be panicked okay let's come to english language uh, english is very very simple uh, the question number 3 to 5 are a little tricky and i'll talk about that as well question 1 we have to figure out the incorrect sentence part of the sentence here which is option 2 as we well know as we well know has given rise to it you do not say given rise for you say given rise to okay second one from the words uh, continuous employment has induced in the people a kind of laziness which is most depressing some people were thinking or confused between laziness and anger uh, anger does not uh, you know result in depression and uh, continuous un- unemployment has induced in the people a kind of anger which is most depressing does not fit so well although these both of them are negative and 2 3 and 5 are positive therefore 2 3 and 5 are out but laziness fits in better here because that is what results in depression and at the same time that is what uh, continuous unemployment has resulted in india has resulted has induced in the people okay Question number three to five. The true dash of rights is duty. Some people thought purpose, but no. The answer is source. The true source of rights is duty. And how do you figure that out? By reading the entire sentence before answering it. Okay, because it says that if you want to enjoy your rights, you have to fulfill your duties as well. Now there is confusion between four and five. Uh, some people thought if we all dash our duties, if we all deny our duties, rights will not be. close to seek that's what people thought so they're talking about duties and rights in a negative manner if we all deny our duties then we cannot enjoy our rights however the next sentence also says the same thing if we leave duties unperformed we run after rights they will evade us like an elusive person so we're talking about the same thing that is not possible because we are trying to compare rights with duty it's important that first of all we say that if we do not fulfill our duties then rights will not be far to seek and then if we leave duties unperformed then rights will evade us therefore we have to in order to enjoy our rights we have to perform our duties as well okay therefore the answer to 4 to 5 should be 5 and 1 now this is where it gets tricky and lot of students in in uh, you know trying to answer every question very fast as fast as possible they fail to understand the gist Uh, of every question and that is where they fall so that is where they lack so the trick to answering your questions correctly is to read the question properly is to read it twice and thrice so that you can answer it properly okay let's come to quant question number 1 what should be the selling price of each ream if he wants a profit of 20% now this is a straight forward question you have you have been given cost you've been given a uh, profit percentage which is required you just have to figure out the selling price i think the questions cannot get simpler than this second one is also simple instead of giving you cost price selling price uh, you know you've been given instead of giving you principal you've been given interest uh, and time is also given so you know what the principal can be you don't even need to figure that out you've just been given if an additional interest in one year is required at the rate of 10% then what should what would be the interest in absolute terms i think it's very simple okay there might be some questions based on graphs and tables and this graph is very tricky let me tell you very clearly now uh, you have been given that there are 700 employees the attributes for promotion are these six and then 32% of all employees say that seniority is our first priority or we think that seniority uh is most important if you want a promotion okay this is what it means 17% of employees feel that seniority is or ranks second in uh, importance with respect to promotion so 32% people and these percentage of people think 
that these attributes are the most important and then if we come here we see 35 percent of people feel that intelligence is the least important intelligence is the least important when it comes to promotion that that is what helps you to answer question number five question number five let's jump to that first which attribute is considered the least important for promotion a lot of people might think that sociability because only five percent of people think that sociability is the most important that means i think you know majority of people think that sociability is not that important but that is not the correct approach 35 percent of people feel that intelligence is the least important when it comes to promotion okay and that is what is our answer that is the right way of decoding this particular graph okay how many employees give rank 3 to intelligence 70 straightforward which attribute for promotion has received the highest rank seniority of course has received the highest rank at 32 percent all the others are lower okay then there are reasoning questions this is again a confusing question it says if the letters in the word tops can be rearranged to form a meaningful meaningful word the meaningful word that i could create here is opts which is opt opt you opt for something and then you opts uh, he opts for something he opts for cricket or he opted for cricket over football something like that okay now it is just a plural form of opt and therefore even i'm confused whether it should be taken as a a valid word or not but if it is then the answer is four otherwise the answer should be five okay then you have question on syllogism which is very straightforward no need to discuss it then there are three questions based upon um, a puzzle or a seating arrangement or an arrangement of any kind given to you here the important thing to highlight is that there are only two variables and therefore it is doable and that is what you should be doing once you try and solve an arrangement try to figure out how many variables are there in that arrangement okay then then there are two questions both of them from accounting and very very logical very conceptual in nature i've discussed both of these in my accounting videos i remember and this is where it gets interesting the first question is tangible net worth is dash now you all know what is tangible net worth what is net worth i've taught that as well uh, it is uh, probably you can say assets minus all the liabilities except except capital or you can just say that it is share capital plus reserves which forms capital of the company so tangible net worth is share capital plus reserves the second question is based upon the principles of accounting okay and this is where it gets interesting although it is not directly given in the course but if you're not aware about the principles of accounting then probably you cannot answer anything or you cannot understand accounting at all the question says the concept of deferred revenue expenditure is closely related to which of the following accounting concepts okay deferred revenue expenditure now revenue expenditure is expenditure that is uh, incurred in the day-to-day -day activities of an enterprise deferred is which is not being paid which is due but not being paid so let's say you were due to pay rent of let's say 20,000 in this month uh, for uh, you know your company that you're running for the place that you've rented but you've not paid it you did not pay it you thought that I'll pay it next month because of COVID I'm not able to earn anything and you convinced your landlord that you'll be paying it next month now in your books of accounts you will still as per accrual principle you will still be registering it as an expense as an outstanding expense okay and that is the accounting concept or accounting principle that has been followed accrual concept it is not at all under, uh, you know related with going concern matching concept conservation or consistency if you are aware about all these principles and concepts only then can you correctly answer this question otherwise not okay so we are done with sample questions and i am very sure you have taken something or the other from the discussion that we've just had uh, let's uh, move forward and complete the entire information handout questions that are saved or marked for review after answering will only be considered so there are only two uh, possibilities where the question is going to be considered for evaluation if you have marked it as saved or if you have marked it for review okay sections will be displayed on the top bar you can shuffle between the sections very important uh, recently a lot of bank exams are occurring where you cannot shuffle uh, for example SBI you cannot shuffle between sections but you can do it here okay so it's mentioned here clearly you can shuffle between sections and questions 
after the expiry of 100 minutes that is 60 minutes for paper 1 40 minutes for paper 2 your uh, paper will be automatically submitted okay please make sure that arugya setu app is active on your phone when you go in for the examination and it shows that you are safe otherwise you will not be allowed to enter the hall okay take a ballpoint pen with you sheet of paper will be provided to you for rough work if the examination is held in more than one session then it clarifies here there will be equipercentile method used for for what for normalizing your scores okay no knowing about it is not going to help you in any way but i will be discussing it as i said in one or two future uh, videos as well okay you have to take your mask which is compulsory and take your pen as well uh, if you have moderate or high risk status on Arogya Setu app, you will not be allowed entry. Okay. So these are all the confusions which existed related to phase one of SEBI examination, paper one and paper two. I hope the sample paper is going to give you some clarity on the kinds of questions that can be asked, uh, that are expected to be asked and how do you go forward and prepare in the next 20 days. All the very best guys. Take care.